What's going on everybody? This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing. Today we're going to be taking a look at the indices. We're going to be doing that looking at the e-minis over here. Before we do that, there's a comment I wanted to talk to you about over here. This was on this weekend's video and you could see right around here. Um, it was from Ram and Ram said, if you look at the monthly chart of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and the Dow, you can see that they're all in a channel. And when it's at the top of the channel, the resistance has started to turn around, which was the crisis. And where it suddenly stopped in March was the bottom of that channel. If we continue this uptrend, it could be all time highs and a retest of the channel. That channel spans back to 2006 for both the Dow and the S&P and 2016 for the NASDAQ. He went on to give some levels that we could be looking at which was 3,300 on the S&P, 250 on the triple Qs. And we're gonna be taking a look at that just a moment in this video. We're gonna take a look at some future levels of the equity markets. Miguel, I opened up the community. You could just go ahead, follow this link for details on joining. I agree with Dr. Power. I love the vids, Jordan, and the time frame and the time and effort you put in to share the knowledge, your thoughts. Thank you so much for that. And this comment, Jordan, did you see that Raul Powell, the founder of Real Vision, said that 25% of his portfolio is in Bitcoin and he thinks it could go 100 x in the next five years. I did reply he might be off by about six months or so when you when you fit when you factor in timing. But awesome that he's on the trade. Listen, let's take a look over here at Stanley Drunkenmiller had some thoughts that we want to take a look at. It's going to be a perfect segue into the next area we want to take a look at, which is corporate debt. You had your speech at the, uh, at the Economics Club. Uh, at that point, you looked around the world and, um, you know, stocks had moved quite a bit by then. And it may have looked rich or it may have looked like there was a lot of uh, things we, we couldn't foresee. Uh, it, it's moved quite a bit since then. Um, are you more concerned now and comment on the Fed and the Fed's action as well? Just where, what, what, in the last three weeks, what have you witnessed, would you say? Well, I've been humbled many times in my career, uh, and I'm sure I'll be humbled many times in the future. And the last three weeks certainly fits that category. Um, so I had long-term concerns for the last few years that uh, because of easy money, too much debt was built, being built up in the corporate sector. Um, when COVID hit, I was pretty much of the view that there was a good chance that the bubble had finally, the credit bubble had finally burst and the underlining, the unwinding of that leverage could take years. And that brings us over here to this Twitter thread that discusses debt levels and triple B rated companies, which represent a serious threat. This is what Stanley is worried about. Now, Stanley, we're going to look at just in a second, what for the near term, for what's going on right now, his view on the market. And then we're going to get into the charts and look at ours. But this is the thing that's overhanging Stanley's Stanley's perception of the market. This is a big part of his thesis and why we could see much lower lows. Let's take a look at it. We need to be aware of both sides. Over here, he's looking at this B, this triple B index. This is including the, the most triple B indebted company per sector, equally weighted versus the SPX that's in pink. So you could see, first of all, on the way down, it was the triple B heavily weighted indebted companies that were leading on the way down. But at the end, they kind of they kind of reached the same plateau, the last two legs down. And now over here on the upside, it is the triple B indebted companies which are lagging. Let's take a closer look at that. Look over here, you can see the retracement so far on the SPX has been 76.4%. While on the GMI triple B index, it is lagging. You can see that it is lagging down a full FIB retracement level. Now the long-term chart is awful. A portfolio built up with these companies will be down 55% since January 1st, 2000. And that is an awful looking chart over here. Now this is the really interesting chart. Look at this, it says these 11 companies account for nearly $1 trillion in market cap. It's AT&T, Broadcom, Citigroup, American Tower Corp, CVS, 
General Electric, DuPont, uh, Walgreens, uh, Ford, Occidental Petroleum, and Exxon Corp. Now, while the total debt is nearly $1.3 trillion or 135% of market cap, so this is why you can see why it's beginning to be a concern. Let's go a little further. Here's the debt to market cap ratio for each company. You could see Ford is an obviously an enormous amount of trouble, followed by Citigroup, Occidental Petroleum. We're going to get into this because a lot of Robinhood investors are currently buying into all of these companies. Let's see what that means. But you could see even AT&T, even AT&T, which they do have that, that residual income coming in every month. They're still 81% uh, market cap to debt ratio, which is very, very high. You could see the BB, triple B GMI index completely decoupled from the SPX since 2014. Okay, so which, which way are these jaws gonna shut? Right? Are we going to see the triple B shoot shoot up here and catch up to the S and P, or are we going to see the other way around, the S and P catch up to where um, the triple B is the most indebted? Regardless of the debt to market cap ratios, these stocks are underperforming the SPX. Robinhood users are piling on them. This is obviously very interesting to look at. We'll start with Ford. That was the most indebted. We saw that. And you can indebted as a ratio to market cap. And you could see over here that as the price continues down, Robinhood users are piling in. That's in the green. That's that's Robinhood users are in green. And look at all these these corporations, Citigroup, record high numbers, Occidental Petroleum of Robinhood users. Why are they buying? Why are they buying the most fragile companies? Right? So if you this, if if these companies do go, see the problem is is right now, and we've looked at this right now. The markets are following global liquidity. Since the Fed has ex, Fed has expanded its balance sheets, it's improved global liquidity. We're seeing the markets rise. If any of these companies, if any of these companies start to become insolvent and head towards bankruptcy, you're going to see in the in the cre debit in the corporate debit markets. In the corporate debt markets, you're going to see an enormous domino effect that's going to affect everything. And if these companies go down, U.S. banks will be at risk. But not just U.S. banks, also European banks, which you know are already in bad shape. And you could see actually European banks are more closely tracking this triple B uh, holder per sector. And that is the concern Stanley is talking about. But let's see also what Stanley is talking about as far as what he sees going on right now in the markets before we give a look at it ourselves. I'm still of that view over the long term, but next week I turn 67. And um, if I have a view five years out, that's all, that's all fine and dandy, but I'm not even sure I'll be alive. So let's talk about the intermediate term. I did give a talk at the Economics Club and I, I talked about how horrible I thought the risk reward was. Um, I would say that since that time, a couple of things have happened technically, which is part of my process. And I would also say I underestimated how, how many red lines and how far the Fed would go. But the great Marty Zweig, who I learned a lot from in technical analysis, had this thing called a breadth thrust. And early last week, um, the advanced decline on the New York Stock Exchange was over two to one for a 10 day period. That is an undefeated record on an intermediate basis. And, and what is clearly happening is the excitement of pre-opening is, is allowing a lot of these companies that have been casualties of COVID um, to come back and come back in force and with a combination of hopes with the Fed money uh, and in particular a vaccine where the news has been very, very good since that economics club. And I think probably more important than the market here is, is that breath expansion and the fact that the rotation out of the COVID winners into the COVID leaders gives you a big, big breath expansion because frankly, there are a very limited number of large cap, but very large cap companies that benefit from COVID. And there are hundreds of companies that get hurt by COVID. So that's why the, say the first 35% of the rally was led by the growth stocks, and now it's being led by 
obviously the last few weeks the value stocks. So you could see Stanley is quite bullish on the equity markets right now. Even he says if it doesn't make sense to him, it doesn't matter. He's getting some he's getting some technical indications now that we should be actually be long. He's pointing out breath. And over here we could just we're gonna pull up the true trend today. We're gonna pull up the tr true trend. We're gonna use this as a guide. We can see right now that clearly this market, which is overbought in an uptrend at some pretty high levels, continues to extend itself right over here obviously this is not a time to be looking to take any type of long position in the markets but it is it is a time to continue looking for when we're going to receive any type of pullback where that we could lean into right and that's obviously not happening today the risk to reward is not no longer on the upside we need to wait for a pullback and no longer we're going to take a look over here we're going to take a look at the s p 500 this is the cfd uh look all through this area, all through this area, right? Nice to be on the same try to Stanley, even if it's wrong. This was where there was opportunities as we got towards the top of the trend to look to lean into this to the short side, again, over here. No longer once we broke out over here with this momentum. At this point now, the market is not in any type of, uh, in, in any type of situation that appears where it could be rolling over. And this current euphoric momentum period is going to last until no it longer does now we have over here let me pull back up the es for you we have over here the true trend to use as our guide during this period what we're going to do is just wait for this entry cci to get pulled back against the trend and offering us a type of indication that we're no longer chasing momentum that the market has reset near term and it's a better safer place to go ahead and enter a long position now as we start continuing this euphoric move is it possible that we start seeing a steeper pullback as we had a hint on today on some japanese yen pairs that perhaps as we're reaching these very very overbought levels we're still under 200 though on the trend cci this move could, could definitely continue to extend but right now it is overbought in this extended uptrend we need to wait for a pullback before we think about entering a trade it's not just the the s p the es that's showing on over here look at, over here at the dow this is looking at the e-mini dow futures and you can see the same exact thing you see price very overextended trending nicely but price has remained overbought for a while uh, why i do not want to trade against this because there's no longer an indication that perhaps it is running into resistance and could be rolling over. If and when we start seeing, if and when this becomes perhaps the end of the trend and we start seeing an impulse to the downside, we'll be able to go ahead and we'll be able to see that rolling over and get involved. That's There's no indication of that happening right now. You could see that also happening right over here. Right here, the true trend went negative as price was breaking below what we thought was perhaps this trend line which was also a neckline of a head and shoulders pattern now that didn't play out like that but there you could see if this was the case this this portion of the trend down would have just been beginning right right now we're just waiting for the trend to cool off a little bit before we get involved let's also take a look at the nasdaq looking at the nq for the nasdaq 100 e-mini futures you could see that there was a slight pullback earlier today in tech you could see that playing out right over here where the entry side was pulled back and since now during new york has already gone on to start making higher highs waiting for that pullback to occur on the s p we haven't had any type of pullback whatsoever in, in a few sessions so we're just waiting for the market to reset and then we'll look to take a position but right now foreign exchange is offering by far better trading bitcoin bitcoin is about to enter the bull market so you should be tracking and following Bitcoin right now. Uh, that is the trade of the next 18 months without any question. Nothing else, nothing else is going to come close to competing with that. Everyone, I hope you have a beautiful day. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock a.m., a half hour before the U.S. equity markets open, where we'll take a look at the markets together, develop our plan, and analyze the markets looking for setups coming in the sessions ahead. I'll talk to you later, everyone.